It's all in the timing today on Make It Artsy. Hi, I'm Julie, Bay Fan Balzer, and we begin with a foiling project. So I love foiling because I love bling. And you can see how on this cute little wedding invitation, it really gives it such a nice professional touch, even though it has a little DIY flavor too. So to get started, I have put together a very simple file. It's just two doves uh, and the last names of the bride and the groom, who happens to be me and my fiance. And and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab those from the memory here and I can see it there. Then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna scan in my invitation. And this is because I wanna be able to place those images exactly in the empty space that I've left in that invite. So when I see it on the screen, I can go ahead and drag it over. Now I think that weddings are the perfect opportunity for a little bit of foiling because people expect something a little beyond the ordinary when they open the invitation and they know that they're going to a very special party. So I can see it here on the screen. And now what I wanna do is I wanna zoom in so that I can really place this very, very carefully. And in fact, I might even zoom in even more. And then arrow on over so that I can see my doves, my text, the whole thing, and do a really careful job of placing it where I want it to be. And once it's placed, the only other thing I have to think about is you'll notice that the names have kind of a pattern in them and that's because they're a fill pattern. So I need to pick the fill that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose just, I just want an overall black, but you could do any of these that you wanted. And once I'm happy with it, I'm ready to say, okay. And we are going to foil. So the first step of this foiling process is gluing. So I am going to insert a glue pen. Now, if you've never used a glue pen, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It looks like a pen, but it's actually filled with glue. And then I'm just going to place it into the holder until I hear a click. And then take out the blade and go ahead and put the pen in there instead and then press start. Now, a quick safety thing, which is whenever you take a blade out, whether it's your craft knife or your scissors, you really should always put a safety cap on it or something like that because, you know, our workspaces get messy and it's just a little bit nicer to know that you're not gonna poke yourself with something. So while that is going ahead and drawing out the glue, I thought that we could make some other things. So, I want to make my plain old envelope a little bit more special. So what I've done is I decided to coordinate the envelope. What I would do is I would take some paper and I would take a little piece of it to use on the RSVP card. And you can see here what a nice difference that makes. This is just a printout from my computer, put a pretty piece of paper on it and boom, you've got magic. Now this is pattern paper, but you could certainly use some paper that you painted. I mean, wrapping paper would be really cool if you wanted to, uh, you know, even use like a photograph of the bride and the groom, anything like that. But you can see how easily that just transforms a very plain piece of paper into a really pretty RSVP card. Now the envelope, all I've done is I've cut a piece of paper that you can see fits in here, but it's kind of ugly and it's got a problem, which is can you see that the edges of this envelope are slightly angled in, they're slightly angled in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a ruler and I love these grid rulers because you can see through so you don't really have to measure. And all I'm gonna do is actually, I'll flip this over so I can draw on the white side of it, which will make it a little bit easier for me to see because that pattern is very busy. And all I'm gonna do is find this sort of line right there and then say I'm gonna trim it just like that. And I'm just lining up the, these grid lines with the edge of the ruler instead of actually measuring just like that. And then it seems a little bit long. So let me again line up my grid lines to tell myself where I wanna cut this, maybe like here-ish. And then I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer and go ahead and trim all of that off. So you don't have to use a paper trimmer. If you feel more comfortable with scissors, rock on, you can use scissors. You know, there aren't a lot of hard and fast rules about what you have to do. So let me just put that here. 
There you go, line it up and slide. And now that little sliver will come off. I'm also going to turn it again right like this. There you go, get that angle going. Oops, let's see if I can get that angle going one more time and just trim it off. And same on the other side. Let's just line that up and trim it off. So now I should have something that is going to perfectly fit inside my envelope. Ah, look how pretty that is, but it's missing the crease. So you can do this a couple different ways. What I like to do is flip it over once again, and then just find where the crease in the envelope is, make a little notch, and then go ahead and use a scoring tool. And all that's gonna do is add a score line. Now, if you didn't have a scoring tool, you could just use you know, a piece of foam and a bone folder or anything like that. But this just creates a really nice score so that this heavy paper is going to fold really easily, which is great. So now, when I slide this into my envelope, you can see how easily it just folds right over. I do want to put adhesive, but I actually, it's sort of counterintuitive, I only need to put adhesive on the flap. I do not need to put adhesive anywhere else. And now I have a lined envelope, a matching response card. I can, I can hear that the machine is done, so we are ready to go ahead and grab this. Now, technically, you are supposed to let this dry for a little while. So I have one here, which I'm gonna place in exactly the same spot, which has been drying. Because the thing is, you need the glue to be 100% dry for the foiling to work. So once that's on there, I'm gonna take my foil and I'm gonna place it over my glue. Then, I'm taking my clear sheet, I'm putting it down, and this just protects the foil. Foil's actually very delicate, and I wanna make sure that it's not gonna get scratched up in any way. I'm just gonna tape this down into place so that it doesn't shift or move on me. And now I'm ready to go ahead and have the magic of foiling happen. So I'm gonna load this up. Instead of the glue pen, and always remember to cap your glue pen so it doesn't dry out. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my little burnishing tool and put that back in the holder. And now I am ready to go ahead and move on to step two, which is the fancy pantsy part of this where we things get shiny. So this is gonna move kind of like a printer cartridge and you know go back and forth over it so that I can just be lazy and figure out what to do. I did wanna mention while that's working one quick thing, which is I have printed out both my invitation and my RSVP card on the same piece of paper. This makes doing assembly line for wedding invitations, Christmas cards, you know, birthday invitations, whatever it is you're making, super duper easy because all you do is print them all out as many as you need, cut them out with a paper trimmer, and then you can decorate them as much or as little as you want, depending on your personal style. The other thing you'll notice is when I put the foil in the machine, I put the gold side up. Whenever you're working with foil, no matter the color, the color that you wanna see, whether it's silver or rainbow or green or blue, you want that color side facing up because that is what you're really gonna see. So now is the exciting moment. I hope you're as excited as I am. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my invitation off. And now we're gonna pull the foil off. Here we go. It's so cool. And you can see how it just glitters and glows. Now, if you were to say to have any excess foil or anything, you can certainly dab it off. But I found most of the time it just comes out so beautifully, and you can see that it's perfectly out of this foil. Let me put it on a piece of white paper. So you kind of get two for the price of one.